Hi, it's Kevin here and I'm going to be starting a new little series on sculpting, modelling, uh, some medieval objects uh, for just for a little uh, project that I'm doing, my per a personal project. Um, and I'm going to show you how I did them, basically. I'm going to post them on here regularly. And this is the first one. This is a, a medieval pot. I do believe it's Norwegian in origin. And... Um, it's just a really interesting object basically i love medieval things and um, this is the first one so you can see here i'm just using uh, z modeler to build the basic shape to to start with getting all the uh you know, getting the shape not too fussed about the proportions of it to start with just uh, just want to get the shape because as you know it's um, quite easy to manipulate once you get get going on uh, once you dynamesh it you can change the shape quite easily but this is a really good starting point I do this quite often with my objects and um, yeah Z modeler pretty cool it's quite if you've never used it it's quite a it's quite difficult to get into because it's very different to how you model in any other package like Max or Maya even even blender it's quite a different concept uh, but the fundamentals are the same you know it's all polygons it's all verts it's all edges you know you just have to learn how to control them basically um, just adding in some uh, edges if you remember the reference material at the start there was some sort of like groove edges all around the top and i'm just going to put them in place so that when i dynamesh they kind of there's like an edge there that pops out i can see where it is The third one down didn't work quite well, so I just redid it. That's why you've seen that twice. And that's the sort of basic shape of that pot, which is fine. Quite happy with that. Now using a IMM tool to uh, brush to create a basic handle. I'm not too fussed about keeping it straight because these medieval objects are really wonky and really hand sort of made and they got this sort of you know uh, sort of like battered sort of look about them and you can see my handles there's all a bit skew with twisted and that's fine i straighten it up i just said remesh it in a minute and uh and just straighten out all the all the polygons on that handle but you know i quite like that sort of clay wobbly look and i sort of keep it like that to some extent as we go through this um, sculpt yeah and this is me just breaking up the handle just as it said we mesh I can keep the, the topology flowing down the handle quite nicely okay so there's the basic shape I add detail there to the model and then I dynameshed it. Join the handle and that's it. And that's where it sort of starts to sort of come into its own now. And like I said before, I'm sort of keeping that rough and ready look, being really loose with those sort of ed ridges around the top. Um, just because I want that rigid, that sort of rugged look, if you like. Uh, and this is me sort of cleaning up now. It's going to start adding detail to the surface of the object. Just straightening the handle a bit more, doing some more work, getting a better shape, just pushing and pull it, pulling it around. And um, yes, so just getting the top right. I didn't want to straight, the original object had a flat sort of top to it i didn't want that for this i wanted it to be a bit more as if it's been made by hand um, it's, it's close to the original but it was a bit more chipped a bit more wobbly a bit more <laughs> a bit more handmade just defining those ridges a little more Mm -hmm. 
quickly. There, I did a lot of work on the surface detail. I didn't want to bore you to death with me doing little little bits and pieces there. Uh, so I just like jumped forward, and you can see I'm adding scratches now. Uh, but it, once you start adding all the detail, it really brings it alive. Some dents onto the handle. You can see the top. The top is flat, which is what the original one was like, my, my reference image. But it wasn't flat flat. I could have sort of, you know, flattened it right off just by cutting the top off, but I quite like that bumpy, sort of wobbly look at the top there. And here I'm just duplicating the object so that I can um, Z remesh, yeah, like this. I, I sort of divided the um, object up into polygroups so I could get a nice work, you know, flow, poly flow around the object. Uh, so I can uh, Z remesh and reduce the polygon so I can then take it into Painter to start painting it. And then I'm projecting uh, the low one. Uh, projecting the high one onto the low one so I can get the shape back exactly how it was with the high detail mesh and it keeps its shape really closely which really helps when you take it to substance painter because then you can just bake the high one onto the low one and get all the detail back in a normal map and that's what you're seeing there basically I wasn't too fussed about how many polygons it was because this is just a personal project. I'm not really doing it for any sort of game or anything like that. But you can take that down a lot more. I think I do. Yeah, I'll take out some of the loops just to make it easier on Substance Painter um, and painting it. Using Z Modeler again just to remove some of the loops. Especially on the inside because you never see it anyway. So that was it, that was it optimized and that's fine. I said we meshed it, kept it the same poly count. And um, I think I then just roughly UV mapped it, just unwrapped it, I should say. creating the polygroups now so I can uh, UV map it and just unwrap the UVs and it doesn't have to be perfect uh, basically I did it I split it in half and did the bottom separately so that I could um, the scene would be hidden in substance painter anyway so it didn't really matter too much using triplane art does a really good job of disguising the scene there you go and that boom there we go that's cool that's that's perfect for what I wanted to do uh, just to take it into substance painter and from here I just exported it two FBX files one high one low and I also had a problem when I first baked it here in substance painter I had a problem with the um, edges of the with the normals on the low mesh and I did a separate video to show you the f to show you the problem and to show you how I fixed it and I'll put that link to that video at the top of the screen now and you can click on that and go and check it out. But there you go, I, can, I start with a base layer of clay and I um, use triplanar to hide the seams, you can't even tell that they exist which is cool. And, and then I sort of layer it up with a paint layer and then uh, you know literally a paint that color that green color paint I use something that's similar yes I think it was black actually um, yeah like that and I changed you know make it shiny get rid of some of the because that's a pre uh, a material inside substance painter and I just get rid of a lot of the layers that they used um, and just make it as close as I could to the original colour. Get 
rid of the interior. It didn't have any paint on the inside. Or on the bottom. I think it just gives it a nice used look. Even though the paint is actually called metallic paint, I took the metallicness off of it and made it a bit more shiny and porcelain like, if you like. And here I'm adding sort of a gradient to the base upwards for my dirt layer so that I could um, spread the dirt up to the top gradually and with it fading. Uh, so there's a lot less dirt at the top than there is at the bottom. I do that several times with lots of different types of dirt layer and I add speckles of different colored paint in as well using the same process. You'll see that coming now. There it is. It's like a position uh, modifier. You can see it doesn't cover the top of the jug. I just use it on the bottom and gradually blend it out as it goes up. Really useful little feature of Substance Painter. Adding just more dirt, more grunge um, onto the object. Gives it sort of character, makes it look old, feel old. And it's what the original object reference material was like anyway. And I think I'll show you that at the end in a moment. Yeah, and this is me adding some sort of lighter speckles to the actual paint because there was some light, lighter speckles in there. And this is the original, and you can see it's very close. Not quite the right shape, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, and you can see on the original there, there's a lot of light speckled paint, and I'm gonna I'll, I'll try and mimic that on this object here. It's not exactly the same, but that's that's the point. It's just you know, it's just making my version of that object. It's very close. Another layer of dirt using the position sort of gradient, uh, just more bottom than you know, it doesn't go all the way out. And this is the render, the, the renderer inside substance. I'm just setting up the renderer now to capture some nice renders of the object. And that's it, pretty much finished. Didn't take me very long, it's probably an hour's work there or thereabouts, hour and a half. Um, and you get a really nice looking medieval jug. Perfect. I think I just tweak, start tweaking the renderer now, and just make some adjustments. Anyway, so I, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've now got a Patreon uh, page, if you click on the link below. If you want to see more stuff like this and help support me build a lot more objects and teach you a lot more things about uh, ZBrush. I've got a course developing on Patreon as well if you want to learn how to use ZBrush and that's pretty cool. I've also got um, some courses over on Udemy and all the links for those are down below. So that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>